Okay, let's get started by checking your energy level. Uh, hello, TC. Well, I don't know if that's the energy level I would have expected and if that would have got my attention if I would still sit in the office like that. So let's try that again. Hello, TC. That's the energy level we need. And uh, yes, yeah, seriously, that's me. Uh, that's me six years back. Since then, I lost quite some here. But also, the interest in embedding Tableau has waste uh, quite a lot. My name is Timo Tautner, and I'm a senior solution consultant based out of Germany. Uh, I joined Tableau six years ago, and that was a picture of our very first office three months after I joined, because when I joined, we were not having an office at all. And um, this is my 14th Tableau conference. How is that even possible? In the background of my image, you can see that at the beginning, we were having many local ones throughout Europe before we were having like the three big ones per theater. Um, I'm since 10 years in the industry. I started my career at IBM, where I started as a consultant specialist for Cognos reporting. Um, well, then I realized Cognos is not developing towards the direction I wanted to, so I became more of an architect. And since I joined Tableau, I'm doing pretty much a similar move, right? From I was a specialist, and now I help people more, like integrating that into their own software and doing something cool about it. And in my spare time during rainy weekends, I like to blog post stuff around Tableau on my blog, tableaufence.com. So everything you will see today will be shared on that blog as well. And today with me is Jackson Wang. Jackson, if you could stand up for a second. So Jackson is one of our rock star developers in Seattle, uh, in the Bay Area, not in Seattle. Uh, he's with Tableau since four years, and this is his fourth Tableau conference, and he calls himself a professional ping pong player. I never got the chance to challenge that, but please try to do so in, uh, like at the data night out tomorrow. So why are we the perfect team for today's session? That's pretty easy, because we, we're both data geeks, and we are combining the knowledge of the, like JavaScript in general and the Tableau world. And every good session should like solve a certain problem. So the problem we want to try to solve with you together is that you're probably already having a software, and you're probably in the room because you're interested in knowing how to get Tableau into it. So we help you to bridge the gap between these two worlds in different ways, like you will see throughout the session. So getting Tableau into your software, that's like the goal of today. And here's the session flow. In the first part, we will be talking about how to get started, what is embedding, and then how to get started with it. Then we will see some common scenarios where Jackson will talk you through some code snippets. And last but not least, we will see more customer examples and partner examples, what are other clients already doing with it. This is just three out of four parts. The very last part is really about like a call to action where you see at the very end, like where we'll share a link with you so that you like start to embed something by your own when you're back at home. And for those of you who might realize that there is a small bar chart in here, this is actually the nerd level, right? So in the first part, we will get a little bit nerdy by coding in front of you and then uh, move on from there. Why is, uh, by the end of the session, there are three things we want you to take out of it, which is you should feel confident in getting started using the JavaScript API. You will be equipped with commonly requested code snippets you can use for your own embedded projects. And last but not least, you should be eager to build your, your own data product. So hopefully you are as passionate as we are about the JavaScript API, and maybe you share your results so that we can present on that next year. Um, two more informational slides. There is crowd participation required. That was the reason why I checked on your energy level, because um, maybe some of you already wrote something in front of a larger audience. And it's commonly not a good idea to write too much text in front of a larger audience. And we will code in front of you, so that makes it even a little bit harder. Uh, but if there are any typos in there, we will blame it on you, because we told you there's crowd participation required. Uh, last but not least, last informational slide. There are other sessions related to embedding. We're kind of like the opener, and then you can deep dive into hands-on sessions and other trainings. Just search for embedded, and you will, you will get more content. OK, let's get started with what is embedding? What does that mean? Who of you spends uh, his day on, or on a daily basis within using Tableau Desktop? OK, some of, many of you. 
Um, if, you're ta if you're talking to a regular audience, it's not as common that so many people are using that. So maybe uh, Ivan is here, our sales director based out of Germany. He's more often in our CRM system, which of course is Salesforce in our case. And wouldn't it be great if he could see like, what are the interesting opportunities uh, he should focus on directly in fr front and center within Salesforce? Or maybe, especially popular in Germany, if you're using operational tools like SAP, you might have a look at long lists, but they don't tell you as much as if you put some visualizations next to it. And all of us are probably also end users of modern apps, which maybe allow us to track where we run, hike, or bike, and then we can see some information around what we are doing as visuals as well. So embedded analytics is really if you're putting data or analytics like in the context of what you're doing on a daily basis. But how to do that? Uh, the most fun part of doing that is really like trying it out rather than just talking about that. So that's what we're doing for the next uh, 20 minutes. So we put something together, like a quick start guide of how to integrate something into your very own like blog, wiki, web application, whatever it is. And the first step is really using the embed code. Has anybody used the embed code before? Yeah. So it's well known to most of you. So let's do a very easy thing. So I want to integrate something into a blank portal. So therefore, I'm going to choose like a random visualization from Tableau server. In this case, it's Tableau online. And I'm going to click on the share button. And I'm just using the copy and bad code. And it can look different to different uh, versions of Tableau, but you will always have that. And if I just copy and paste that, and I refresh my page, you will see nothing special but the visualization. But the thing is, with that, you already checked, is there a communication between Tableau Server and your tool of choice where you want to integrate stuff into? So let's go back to our tutorial. What is the second step? The second step is really the JavaScript API tutorial on our web page. So why are we not just sticking with what we are having? Well, the problem is, if I now want to, let's say, add a button outside of Tableau, and I want to filter based on this to Tableau, I can't do that with the embed code. It's still interactive. I can still interact and filter on my visualizations, but I can't force it from the outside to do something. Right? So that's where you want to use the JavaScript API for. So let's do that. There are really four easy steps. You don't need to read it. I will, I will show you what all of these steps are doing. The first step is really just referencing the JavaScript API. And your server has an own URL to it. So it's basically your server slash JavaScript API, Tableau, and then so on and so forth. You just need to change that. And I'm going to use Tableau Public because then uh, it's easier for me to share with you and you can try it out easier. So public.tableau.com. So this is just referencing the JavaScript API. The next thing is then, I need to have a diff container. All of you are aware of what diff containers are in web development? Yeah? So it's basically just an HTML container where I can put in context. So I'm going to copy and paste that with container into here. And then the second last step is really a function which calls a viz of choice. So let's do that. Copy and pasting that into the JavaScript part. And basically, I'm calling something container diff. That's exactly the, the diff container we've just been creating. And I need to call the URL to the visualization I want to put into my web page. So rather than using the same one again, I'm going to use one from Tableau Public, which is around the amount of views and the amount of visits per author. So I'm going to copy and paste that link again, because that's the visualization I want to use. So in, at this time, it's not the embed code. And you can get rid of everything behind the question mark, because that's what you can control via JavaScript as well. Last but not least, there is a, the function called initViz, which I need to reference somehow. Like, when do I want to load it? Is it when I click on it, when, it, when the page gets loaded? So I'm going to do that when I click on it. So directly below my Viz container or above, it doesn't matter, I'm going to put in a button, and I will put in an on-click function. So when I click on it, I want to do something. And what I want to do is calling the initialize viz function. So let me paste that in here. And I simply call it load viz. 
and then close it according to, according to HTML. So let me just put it below that because then you're seeing one effect, which is once I click on it, it will uh, put the bush button below the viz. So here's the very same thing. When I click on load viz, it will load the visualization. Nothing special, but it works. OK, just to test your energy level, just a little bit of an applause. OK, you're, you're still alive. But again, nothing, nothing fancy. I totally get that. So uh, let's make it a little bit more advanced. So we're going to do that by navigating ourselves to the j tutorial of the JavaScript API on our web page. And I will just call two more functions which we didn't use uh, in the past. So the first one is really, you see there's an advanced version of the initialized viz, which is basically I can define the width, the height, if I want to hide the tabs, I want to show the toolbar, and many other things. And if you run that, you will basically see directly what's happening. And I want you to be aware of that because you can reuse the code here and make it your own again. So let me just add the options here. And instead of uh, making that, uh, I will make it a fixed size so that we can see that the size changed while I'm loading it. And uh, one more thing is here. I called it container div rather than placeholder div. And now I'm loading the very same page, uh, the very same dashboard, just with 800 times 800. So again, nothing special. So let's add one more thing to it, which is I want to filter from my application to Tableau Server. So in this example, you can see we have something called region. It's a dimension. And there are different values in there. And here you see a function called filter single value, and then something like active sheet apply filter asynchronously on a dimension called region, and the value the Americas. So I'm going to put that into my code as well. And then I will say, well, I don't want to filter on something called region, but on something called peer group, because that's what I have in the, in the viz or behind the viz. And I'm going to filter on peer group too. So let's refresh it. And of course, for the second part, I also need to have a button so that I can filter on that. I need to somehow interact with it. So at this point in time, I will just call something filter single value, and the button itself will be called filter. Perfect. Let's refresh it. Load the viz. Nothing fancy. Let's filter on it. And here you go. Right? We fed it from externally, and it works fine. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here, because that's part of the fanciness and part of what you probably want to provide to other suppliers or partners, which is when I hover over a certain like, point in my visualization, uh, you will see in a second if Tableau Online, uh, Tableau Public will still run, um, that we have like a tooltip, which gives me the rank of a certain uh, author on Tableau Public and how that one is performing compared to his peer group, right? And that's a very common use ca case, and I will reference to that later on when we talk a little bit more of the business side of it. Okay, but let's make it more fancy. So I have like two different things I put in here. The first one looks like a lot of code, but it's not. It's basically just two checkboxes. You might wonder why Timo put in there like just simple two checkboxes. Well, if you're taking a certain style sheet and also include that into the overall file and you reload it, you will get these nice control bars over there. <laughs> so if you don't take anything out of that, take that out of it. Um, yeah, and then I have just one more function which controls the lower toggle thing here. Um, which allows me to do one fun thing, which you will see in a second. So if I now refresh the page, then I will turn on the engines. So I'm loading the viz. And then I will turn on the second one, which will basically change like just the viz itself. So I'm taking a, a um, shape, which actually then shows me what um, like I wanted to see, which is different peer groups having different icons. But two more things I want to do here. Currently, I'm, still, uh, I'm filtering statically on number two, or a peer group two, which is boring. I want to define that, and I want to control that from the outside. So therefore, let me put in a last input field, which is really um, an HTML input text box. So input type equals text. 
and it will be empty at the beginning, and then I will close it accordingly. And the only thing I need here is I need to, an, to have an ID so that I can control it or use its value somewhere else. So let's call it user input. So now, you see, like, typing is a difficult thing. So now I can reference that instead of having a static two, I can say, well, I used the document get element by ID function, and I'm referencing my user input, and I just get the value out of that, which allows me to now filter on whatever I, as the end user, want, and to make it a little bit more appealing, there's also a dark version of the very same sheet. So if I now refresh it, if I save it, and if I refresh it, and load the viz in the first part, and then I filter on, let's say, two, or just to see something else in three. Now I can filter on whatever I want, and I can turn that on whenever I want. Right? So last applause for the coding part, because it worked fine. <laughs> and let's talk about the first customer example, which you will see throughout the session, which is leveraging the JavaScript API. Um, to make you aware of that, the JavaScript API is just one out of many APIs we have at Tableau of the overall developer platform. And today, we are just focusing on the embedding part, but there's way more, so figure that out. And one last note, you will hear more often that we're talking about the embedding API, which is basically the very same thing. We just want to help you to understand what it does. So the first customer example I want to talk about is a former German startup called MyNotes. And MyNotes, at the very beginning, was basically producing beacon scanners. Anybody aware of beacon scanners? So beacons are basically like small RFID chips, you can think of that like this, with a unique ID, and they're in every modern smartphone. And if I would just pass by such a beacon scanner, it could just take my ID, save it in a large database, and then some sort of logic could define how often have I been here before, or um, yeah, do I pass that every day, or like how long do I stay in that area? What do you think, for which industry could that be really interesting, that technology? Retail. Yeah, I mean, there are many use cases out there, uh, but retail, that was like their first industry where they jumped directly into, because now they could sell something which was, well, I tell you, as a service provider, where you should put in your advertisement to keep people longer in your shop as well as where do I need to put things so that they're buying more. And that was so successful, well, maybe I should show the visuals first. They basically then created like these visualizations you can see here, which they embedded into their portal. So they, the startup didn't need to have anything but beacon scanners, a large database, and then the web portal, which was hosting what they were sharing with their clients or what they were selling to their clients. And that was so interesting to another well-known company called Telefonica. And they were saying, well, let's acquire that and let's bring that to a totally next level, which was now they're combining that data with house price data, in which region do people live of a certain age, census data, weather data. And now they can not just optimize things like, OK, I know that you're passing by my shop every morning because you're going to the underground um, or something else. But they can also tell you, where should you open up your next store in order to make even more revenue? So it's really powerful. And the, the end product is still Tableau embedded into their portal. So with that, I was starting with what does embedding mean? Then we were seeing like, how to get started. And again, I will share the link with you later on. And you will see the next steps also throughout the presentation. And then I jumped into like, one of the examples, which you will see more of at the end. Now let's come back again and let's talk about some common scenarios and some code snippets. So now it's getting really nerdy before we'll see the business side again. And for that, I please welcome Jackson on stage. All right. Great. Thank you, Timo. So that was a really great demo. Good job on the code. <laughs> so now I want to show you, as Timo mentioned, some of the common scenarios in which we use the JavaScript API to integrate custom applications with Tableau. And we're going to look at some code snippets, as mentioned. So here are uh, some of the common scenarios that we're going to go over. Uh, commenting, write back, dashboard filters, as well as a fully interactive uh, demo with third-party software. So first, we're going to look at some dashboard filters. So what 
Tim will show you was a, uh, the way to filter a single worksheet. But the JavaScript API actually allows you to do more. You can actually filter all the worksheets in a dashboard. So let's say you have this nice dashboard here, and you want to be able to go through each worksheet and, and apply a filter. This is how you would do it. So first, we would grab the dashboard from our this object, and then we would get all the worksheets from the dashboard, we would iterate through each one of these worksheets, and apply a filter. And here, my filter, I'm applying state uh, equal to Nevada. But if you want to, you can actually apply separate values for each different worksheet. And the second most common uh, scenario that people are really interested in is write back. And in case you're not familiar with write back, uh, here's an example, right? So let's say you have a this with some inventory data. And when you look at it, you want to go ahead and update the inventory data in your custom portal. And once it's updated, you want to see the data back on your this and hence kind of writing back the data to the this. Cool. So how do you accomplish something like that? So you would start off with a custom web application with your vis embedded in it. And you would have a live connection to a database. Uh, this can be SQL, can be Google Sheets, Excel, can be anything. And you have your custom write logic that can write uh, data back to your database. And finally, the JavaScript API allows you to trigger a refresh on the vis through the refresh async API. So once the write finishes, you can trigger that, and the vis will refresh, and it would pull in the new data that you have just written to your database. So here's a more specific example for writeback. Um, so I actually stole this from Timo. He actually wrote a nice application for support tickets uh, where he can um, show a list of all the tickets, and he can select one of them, and he can submit a comment for one of these tickets and have the comment display right away. So if you recall the diagram from before, this is exactly what writeback is. And here are some code snippets on how to build something like this. So here what I have is a on submit comment function, and this function is triggered when the user hits submit comment. And when they do that, we are going to use the JavaScript API to call get selected marks to get all the marks that the user has selected and the marks that they want to apply the comments to. And of course, you would have your common, uh, you would have your custom logic to make the write to your database. And once that's done, the second part is to use the JavaScript API again to call this.refresh data async. And that would make the this go fetch the new data and display them. Cool, now I wanna go over the third example, which is a fully interactive example that we built uh, with D3JS and various different third-party software. So without going into the details, I wanna show you the demo in action. So what I have here is an application called Find Your Artist. And what I have on the bottom left here is a this that shows all the artists as well as um, their style in a quanti uh, quantified way that shows how acoustic their music is and how energetic, how danceable, et cetera. And now I want to bring your attention to the top left here where I have a dynamic custom filter on the festival. So we can click on this filter to get a drop-down menu, and then we can go ahead and filter on the 2015 Coachella Festival. And here you see that my vis has updated with the artist from that festival. And now I'm going to look for an artist that, is, that has the most energetic music. So I can sort by energy, and then I'm going to select the top artist. And once I select that, you see that there's a nice network diagram that pops up on the right. And this network di diagram basically shows how all the artists are connected together. And you can interact with it to see specifically how each artist connect to each other, like this. Yep. And let's say you actually have an artist in mind that you want to search for. So let's say we want to search for an artist named Eagles that we see on here. So now what I have here is a nice autocomplete function that makes it easy for you to search for artists. And once I select this artist here, you will notice that my vis has updated with the selected artist, and the network diagram has also been updated. Now, all these visuals are great, but what if I actually want to listen to a sample from this artist? And I can do that by hovering over an icon. The sound is turning. Is that working? Uh, let's try it again. OK. Yeah, it's just a probably technical uh, difficulties. But yeah, this is supposed to play the music. Uh, and you know, at the end, you're supposed to clap and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, 
right, thank you. Yeah, so I hope you like this. Now I actually want to show you how you can build something like this yourself. And before doing that, I want to spend some time to go over the Get Data APIs because they're actually a foundational piece to the demo that I built. So what are these Get Data APIs? These APIs are modeled after the view data function in Tableau, and they allow you to programmatically extract data from behind the viz. And it comes in two flavors. Um, the first one it comes in is the get summary data async function, and that returns the aggregated data that is used in a worksheet. And it corresponds to the UI, and it allows you to control the alias values as shown on the UI as well. And the second flavor it comes in is the get underlying data async function, and this gets back the data that's in the data source. So it, it might get you back stuff that is not in the worksheet, but the data set here is much bigger. And again, you can uh, control various uh, parameters that are avail available on the UI. So one of the things that people probably notice in the demo is the nice custom network diagram. And now I want to show you, give you an overview of how you can build something like that with the Get Data APIs. So we start off with the Tableau Viz. We use the Get Data APIs to grab the data out of it. And then we process the data into whatever uh, library that you're using uh, expects. And in this case, we're using D3, so we would process those data into a D3 format. And we pass it into the D3 library, and that's what gets us this nice network diagram. So that's the overview. Now I want to get into more details on how to use these APIs. So while these APIs are really powerful, it does take some practice getting used to. So I want to show you how to exactly do this from code. So what I have here is an exact function that I wrote for this demo. Um, to call the get underlying data async API. So now I want to bring your attention to the get data options here. So this is how you control what data and the format of data that's returned from the API. So you can limit the number of rows that are returned. You can have it show the alias values. You can have it respect your selected marks as well as having it include all the columns instead of just the reference columns in the worksheet. And once we have that, we can go ahead and invoke the get underlying data, data async function on the worksheet and we can, we can input the get data options into that. And the result of this API call is a data table object that contains all our data. And we can pass it to the subroutines where you can set up the different UI components. Cool, so that's how you make an API call. But how do you actually parse the results of the API call? And that's something that some people get tricked up on. So what I have here is a generic example um, called get column values. Uh, function, and this, uh, what it does is that it takes in a data table object you got back from the API, and then it returns the list of column values for the field name that you specified. So the data table object is what we got from the get data API. Now I want to bring you to two important functions here. The first one is get columns. This returns back all the metadata that's associated with this uh, data table. And second is the get data uh, function, and that actually gets back the data that's in a row-based matrix format. So once we have those, we can, second step is that we're gonna go find the column that we specified, and with that column, we can get the index in our matrix that shows our column values. So in, in the third part, we are gonna iterate through each one of these rows, and then we're gonna use the column index to find the data that's in that matrix. And once you find all of those, we have the results, we can go ahead and return that. So this is only about 10, 15 lines of code, but it's actually a very powerful function, and it allows for a lot of different scenarios. For example, it allows you to build your own custom filtering and searching functionality. And by this time, you're probably thinking, did Jackson really just go over all that code to show me how to do a drop-down menu and risk putting everyone to sleep? Of course not. So now I want to em emphasize on the word dynamically. So before Get Data API, you can also build these sort of custom filters. But the thing is, you have to hard code each and every single value in your code. But with Get Data API, you can get those values back dynamically, meaning in the future, when new data is introduced to the data set, a new artist is added, a new festival is added, without changing a single line of code, this data will show up on your application. And that is really the true power of the Get Data API. Cool, so now let's go over how we can build some of these uh, custom filters. So here's an overview. First, we use the Get Data API, and then we use the Get Column Values function that I showed you before to get all the festival names, and finally, we are going to create a drop-down menu and use the apply filter async API to associate the action with the drop-down menu. And here's another code snippet on how we build that filter. So first, we use our get column values, as I talked about. And second, once you have that, it's as simple as going through each one of those uh, festival names and building the drop-down menu items. 
So this looks like it's a, it's a lot of code, but it's actually pretty straightforward, just setting up each UI element and setting attributes, attaching actions, and all that stuff. Cool, so you now have an idea of how to build each one of these UI components, but how do we actually bring this full interactive experience together? Right, so as a review, we had about four main components in our demo. We had a custom festival filter, we had a search functionality for, for the artist, we had our this, and finally we had our network diagram. Now when you select on, a, uh, on the festival filter, what we do is that we're gonna fire off an apply filter async API that updates our Tableau Viz. And when you input something into the uh, search bar, we're gonna uh, fire off the select marks async API that updates the selected marks in the Viz. And finally, when the Viz is updated with the selected marks, it's gonna fire off an event. And that event is listened to by our network diagram and it picks up that event and it updates the network diagram for that particular mark that has been selected. So with this set of APIs and events, we can build this fully interactive experience uh, for our demo. Cool, so here are all the common scenarios that I wanted to go over, and I hope this was useful to you, and as you venture on you know, to build more and more embedded scenarios, you can come back and reference this code and use them to kickstart your projects. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Timo, who's gonna go over some more exciting customer examples. Great, thank you. Thanks a lot, Jackson. And now we will lower the nerd level a little bit. And let's talk about what other customers are already doing with it. And I want to start with, well, we are today focusing on the how to integrate part. But of course, if you're a client and if you're thinking about, well, I'm choosing one out of like 100 different BI vendors for my tool of choice, which I want to integrate, then it becomes a little bit tricky. And Siemens is a company I want to uh, share a little bit more about for the next couple of minutes. They're existing since roughly 200 years. They have more than um, 400,000 employees working for them. They're doing 80 billion in terms of revenue a year. And they've been inventing a couple of different things throughout the last couple of 170 years. And their next big thing, their next big initiative is called Siemens MindSphere. And this is an IoT platform, which I will explain just briefly. So basically, it exists out of three components. So first is, you buy a physical device, which you can use to connect your whatever it is, a train, windmill, production plant, or even smaller things, to the MindSphere platform, so to the cloud itself. That's where all the data is then stored in. And then you can create apps on top of that. And the only problem in the past was that you needed to have some coding skills, which is great, like most of us in the room like coding, but nevertheless, like not all of, all of the people out there who want to leverage analytics can code. So therefore, they were doing an evaluation where they basically send out an RFI to roughly 50 different vendors saying, please answer these 200 questions and we will figure out if you are the tool of choice. Well, and we got back to them, we told them, uh, please don't do that because you will never know out of just that catalog of questions what will be really the, the best tool for your use case. So rather than doing that, we offered them to do what we're calling a guided evaluation. So we were sitting together with them and one of their key clients, and we were then coming up with a prototype on machine data. And to us, it probably looks like not interesting at all, but the client was looking at it like, Holy moly, I've, I've never seen that. And that was just like a four hour workshop. And out of that feedback from the customer, Siemens then fine tuned what we've been creating together and make it look like an application you might want to pay money for. So one thing I really want you to take out of the session, of course, today we are focusing on the integration part. But if you're thinking about integrating Tableau into your own product to sell it to your clients, Start with the prototyping part, because you probably already downloaded Tableau. Sit together with some of your key clients, create something with data you already have, and ask the customer for feedback. That's how you really evaluate if you should move on and integrate that, or if that's just a cool thing to do. Then there is a partner out there in Germany called M2. And they were saying, well, like most of the companies already have some sort of a web portal or something they're offering to their clients. But if you don't have that, we want to offer you that as something where you can drag and drop your own portal, basically. So just in terms of not relying on the internet, 
um, I just recorded that demo, which basically in the first part shows you like a simple embedded vis, and you can click on a certain data point, and you can write back a new value. And you will find more of these examples which you can download on tableaufense.com. And so I basically type in a different number, I submit it, and then I will refresh the viz like Jackson was showing that, and then you will see once I hit the submit button that this directly affects my visualization. And so they offer, on the one hand side, the ability to create these write back extensions, really easy. Or another thing, what I showed in this example is, so I'm creating a new tab, and I'm creating two new like files within there, which is basically two different pages, so that I can navigate to that in a second. And they wanted to lower the barrier for, the, for integrating Tableau even more. So here you can see that I can choose the content of what do I want to put into that, into that particular page. And I'm going to choose a plugin which the partner is owning. And with that, I can now go ahead and simply like log in to my Tableau server. So I'm now going to choose the plugin. It's called M2, that's the company name, Tableau View. And now you see, and I will pause it here for a second, you will see now that it will get via the REST API all the projects, all the workbooks, all the views of your Tableau server without the need of coding. And now I can simply choose, I can simply choose, let's move back in here. I can simply choose, okay, what is the viz I want to integrate in? So I'm choosing the MDM demo. And I could also like customize it in terms of hiding tabs, hide toolbar, setting a different size. And once I'm jumping to that page, you will see basically just the viz I chose. But the crux here is that I didn't need to code, but in the background it's using the JavaScript API. So this is just one example of how you can create your own portal if you don't have already one. So just reach out to our partners for that. Uh, what they also do is this is just an example of how their portal can then look like for an end user. So these are all the views on the Tableau server, but in their portal, you can then navigate to a certain viz, and all of that is, is mobile ready. So once you're opening the same thing up on a mobile device, it will use our uh, mobile views or mobile layouts. Uh, one other thing is a game called Murky. Have you ever heard about uh, Murky? Nobody? Oh, there's one? Oh, oh, yeah, awesome. Do you come from like EMEA somewhere, like the Nordics? Say it again? From France. From France. Okay, nice. So um, most of the time people don't know it at all. And it's basically a game where you're having like these 12 different pieces of wood, and then you throw a piece of wood against it and to try to hit all of them so that they're falling onto the ground. The, you're playing that one versus the other, and you're trying to get exactly 50 points. And the thing is, it starts like this, squeezed together, and then it will be a really tactical game. And when you're playing that at festivals with a little bit of alcohol, you might have difficulties to remember what the exact score was. So I thought I would create an app, and it's like a hot code. So I have it on my, on my, on my uh, mobile phone. So in the first phase, you're just seeing that I'm counting numbers so that everybody's aware of like the score. And of course, if I collect all that data, I can do nice statistics on top of that. So this doesn't look like a Tableau Viz, but is again a Tableau Viz integrated with a JavaScript API. So everything you've been learning today is exactly what you could apply also to a mobile app. And then you see where you win all these tournaments in this example, or even more statistics around how long was a certain game going, which of the game you were winning, how much percent of the games did you win, so on and so forth. Right? So also be aware of the fact that all of that, of course, works on mobile as well, because it's just, just a web container. Two more public examples. Uh, one is KPMG, and one is the European Investment Fund. So uh, let me go to the KPMG example just for a second. So KPMG is doing an automotive survey once a year. And in the past, they've been sending out these, these surveys to executives all, all, uh, all across the globe. And then they were creating a PDF file, which they were offering to download on their web page. Like, what do you think, how many people download that PDF file? Well, it was not as much as it would like, really explain why you are allowed to put so much effort into that. So a couple of years back, they were deciding to do that with Tableau. So now what you're seeing here is when I just navigate to like, one of the views, you're seeing an explanation of what they're actually doing. And you're then seeing 
like an interactive visualization which shows you like the key trends in automotive over the last couple of years, and you can easily filter that down to different regions, different years, and so on and so forth. So it's also a nice example uh, of the JavaScript API. In this example, it's using Tableau Public, so it's, it's even free uh, to use. So if you publish stuff on your web page, feel free to use Tableau Public as well. And then the European Investment Fund, um, yeah, it's just another example where like transparency in Europe helps to see, okay, what do they like support, which of the small and medium-sized businesses are they supporting, and all of that uh, as a Tableau Viz as, uh, as well. So hopefully throughout today's session, you have seen like sky's the limit, like, like whatever use case you're thinking of, like analytics can be part of it, and you can make that in a very cool way. So yeah, take a photo of that, and then we will recap, because I still didn't talk about like one little thing, um, licensing. And I won't spend like more than 30 seconds on that, because you have Ivan. Ivan, maybe raise your hand that everybody is reaching out to you after the session. So he's the director um, uh, for, of sales in, in, in Germany. And well, the thing is, how do you charge your customers is a different thing. We have different licensing if you like use Tableau to give it to your clients. You don't use the standard licensing. There are different ways of doing so. But one common thing you can see throughout all the clients which are already doing that is if you're having three flavors, it makes things easier. The first flavor could be you're just offering simple Tableau visualizations to your clients, put in analytics into your portal. The second thing is technically the very same thing. You still offer interactive visualizations, but now you put in information not just about that single client, but maybe a peer group. And you can just see your own, like your own revenue, whatever it is you're looking at, or the amount of something, and then anonymize how are others performing so that your customers can like, rate their, their selves against like others. And then last but not least, maybe you also want to allow people, if they're paying more for your service, to answer their own question using web edit, using ask data. So this is just one way of how you could like, take Tableau and, and really just uh, take the, the, the amount it costs and give it to your end clients because you're offering additional value to them. OK, so we've been talking about getting started about common scenarios and more examples. Let me quickly show that to you again, that you see what we've been talking about. And that example, by the way, uh, will be available to you very soon as well. Uh, Jackson then was talking about like common scenarios, and I want to point out again, write back and commenting is technically, again, the same thing. Like writing back oftentimes means you want to write back a number, and comment is more of a text, but it's the, technically the very same thing. And you'll find more on Tableau fans for that. And then we talked about more examples, mobile as well as um, embedded from Tableau Public. But keep in your mind that you start prototyping before you integrate it to get feedback from your clients. So these were all these three different parts. Which part did I lose? Or which, did, which part did I not mention yet? The call to action part. So take out your mobile phones. That was not a joke. Take out your mobile phones. <laughs> And you probably want to take a picture of this particular page. And I will show it to you one more time in just a second, because you will see three more demos. So I hope most of you did it. Otherwise, I will show you how to get there, even if you didn't take a, take a picture yet. So on tableaufense.com, you will see the post which I just made five minutes prior to um, the session. It contains everything you need from today's session. Like the, on the very bottom, you see the overall presentation. The first link you will find is the five-step guide. The first step we've already been seeing. The second step was the JavaScript tutorial. The third step is a collection of demos which you can download and customize it to your own. So the first demo you've already been seeing, right? That was the D3.js example. Uh, let's have a look at another one. So we didn't talk about authentication at all. I put the link in there. But most often, you will have your own login, and your application should handle who is allowed to join or who is allowed to come in there. And once you log in, you are then seeing a portal or a viz, depending on your use case. So this is actually showing the stock price for Tableau. And um, well, maybe I want to compare like how many weeks of the overall time we were, on, were publicly traded was the stock price 
above or below uh, 70. So I can easily adjust that in here, and then my viz is updating. And once I hover over it, I get then all the information around, like, if something is above, below, or equal to the stock price, I've just been putting in there as one example. But I can also, of course, change what I want to see. So if I switch to Salesforce, I can then see the price of Salesforce. And again, the stock price of Salesforce. And again, this part is just normal web UI, your logic, your application. And then I trigger the Tableau visualization itself. Uh, two more examples I want to point out. Operational analytics. If you are having applications where you're mainly looking at lists, I highly advise you to feature something like turning on analytics, right? So putting some context about that list front and center to your clients. So once I now click on a certain customer name, I can see how important that customer is in terms of all the transactions. And not just that, I can also highlight a single order rather than looking at all of them. And if I filter or highlight, that's not important. One more thing which I highly encourage you to do, if I refresh the page, look at the right-hand side. The this is there directly. Anybody an idea why is that? I'm not using a super fast server. I'm using Tableau Public. So basically, you can take the REST API and just get the image of every dashboard. And you can show that as a background image prior to Tableau being done with loading. Meaning, now it's interactive. If I refresh it, there will be no tooltip. Now there's no tooltip, but I can already start to process what I'm seeing. Where's the color legend? What is, what is the KPI showing me? And that helps your end users to feel like, oh my gosh, that is fast. That's even faster than Tableau. So make sure you're leveraging that. And the only example we didn't create in here is the never-ending dashboard, but it's an all-time popular thing of a guy called Russell Christopher, who's now working as senior director at Alteryx. So if I scroll down, same principle, I'm seeing all these images. Once I click on it, now I'm actually asked Tableau to give me the, 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 the results back. That's another way of how to smartly deal with performance. OK, that was the step three. Step four is basically just like make it look yours, make it look like something people are willing to pay money for. And last but not least, there's an embedding playbook which talks also about authentication, automation, and mobile. That's probably part where you want to involve Tableau or a partner to help you with rather than reading through all of that, but it's available publicly and it's part of the link you hopefully took a picture from. With that said, please complete the session survey. If you didn't like it, you can skip it. If not, then please rate it. With that said, thank you so much for your patience, and we will take questions now. Thank you.